this is the first one of the maple logs that I turned. <laughs> so this was the first piece of the maple that I started with from the smallest log. Uh, I roughed it, I put it in the kiln around the beginning of February uh, and it is, it didn't quite lose a third of its weight, but I think that it was a little bit dry to start with because I believe that it was dead standing. Um, but it, it won't register at all with the moisture meter, so I'm just going to assume that it's dry and go with it. Uh, if you remember my issues last week with the chucks, uh, you can see how oval this went. 3.8 and 4.1. So that went pretty wanky. Uh, and I want to make sure that I'm going to have enough with this set of jaws before I do all of this. So. I'm just gonna open it up and see let's open it up all the way not that I want it this big but okay I should be able to get there from here as long as I don't get too carry away truing this up this set of jaws should be fine I do have a 130 millimeter set but I don't really want to go any bigger on that I'm going to use a jam chuck and get this mortise trued up. I'll probably get rid of a lot of that too, um, just because I can. I actually don't know why I left it that way unless it was just to recenter it. Um, okay. But is that really where the hole is? That doesn't look right. But I'll start there. Now I gotta look at what is going on here. Uh -huh. All right, if I use that, that's not even remotely centered. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why. I'm pretty sure that that was not the center mark. This is going to be exciting right off the get-go. All right, let's try that one. See if that looks any better. It's hard to tell because it's so kitty wampus anyway, but that did not seem right. Let's try that one. Let's see. I think that looks better. Those of you who have the 1836 lathe, do you know if there's a way to reposition this? because I have such a hard time getting that tight. I'd like to put an extension on it, um, but I can't because of the bracket. And I just wonder if there's a way to reposition where this cam thingy locks underneath there so that it's not stuck right up underneath my support. Because that's not very helpful for those of us who don't have a lot of shoulder strength. I really struggle getting that thing tight and then back loose. Anyway, if anybody knows, let me know. I'm doing the same thing with this. Just using a little wrenchy thing. Because I had bruises on my hands the other day from the tool rest thing.
As it turned out, this blank was very dry. I need not have given it an extra week in the kiln. It was definitely ready to be finished turned. Let's see here. There's not a hole in the top, so I'm not sure what that's from. Oh well, we will find out. After having done a few videos with these maple pieces, which I initially thought might be ambrosia maple, the general consensus seems to be that it is more likely silver maple. And that makes sense based on where it came from. I still haven't found any bug holes in it, so I am just going to assume that it is indeed silver maple and that silver maple has a really interesting and lovely decay pattern when it starts to go. So I will definitely be on the hunt for some more silver maple. I hadn't planned on taking the bark off, but there were a couple of chunks that were loose, so I just went ahead and took the rest of it off. I had a hard time getting a clean cut in a couple of places on this bowl, and I tried all of the things that I have in order to try and get rid of some of this nasty tear out. I did some shear scraping with a bowl gouge, I did some shear scraping with a negative rake scraper, I used a negative rake scraper as a negative rake scraper, I tried cutting uphill, I tried cutting downhill, I used a 40-40 gouge, I used a 60 degree swept back gouge. It just wanted to tear out down there by the base and up by the wings. I am guessing that why I'm having a lot of vibration is because I believe these go kind of all the way through. I think those are each and all the same, so that's a little exciting. I'm going to start truing up the inside, at least down a few inches, and I'm hoping that that's going to help with the vibration a little bit. I'm thinking that maybe if the whole bowl is a little bit more balanced overall that it, it may offer a little bit of stability. I switched to the half inch 40-40 gouge and I think it's really weird how sometimes one tool will work better on one project than another. There's no reason for it, it's not anything different or specialized, but sometimes my 60 degree gouge works better and sometimes the 40-40 does. In this case I definitely had a better cut down the sides with the 40-40 gouge. I still have some ridges and some lines up there by the edges of the wings because it was really hard to keep the bevel contact when it was going through the air spaces, but it should be easy enough to sand out.
And this is why I wear gloves, because even through that, that's burning me. Um, I haven't used the Starbond Brown yet. I might try this. I'm gonna put one of these precision tips on, which I don't think I have to cut a hole in. I guess we'll find out. Hold on a minute. Just in case I make a giant mess, which happens to me a lot with super glue. Let's see. Are you going to come out like you're supposed to? I don't know. Looks like it. Some of these I probably could have done the black with, but I'm just gonna stick with this because this has got so many different shades in it. Probably be fine. I have a discount code for Starbond if you guys need more CA glue. It's in the description. I'll also flash it up on the screen because this is good stuff. I had no idea. We'll see how that does. And we can apply more if we need to. I'm, I'm done up here as far as thickness goes. Um, I need to reshape this outside just a touch and then I'll finish the inside. I'm still trying all the things to get rid of some of this tear out. Sanding is going to be a nightmare anyway, but that's going to make it worse. The shavings coming off of this are so hot that I can't make a complete cut. I have to stop and get the shavings off of my hand, even through the glove, before I make a complete pass around the side.
actually thought about live streaming this video and then I just realized that, first of all, I've never done a live stream before, so I don't really, probably not a good idea to try to do it on the day that you're gonna do something, but I don't have any idea if that's something that you guys are interested in. But I decided against it for this project because I remembered how much sanding I'm gonna have to do and you can't really cut the sanding out of a live stream, so. We'll see how this goes. What else do you guys wanna see? I know some people have asked about sharpening. I always feel like it's a little tricky for me because some of, some of my viewers are turners and some aren't and so you know, trying to find a balance between technical and entertaining can be can be a challenge sometimes. But um, what do you guys think? What kind of stuff do you guys want to see? Using the paper towel trick that I learned from watching the Stuart Batty demonstration, trying to give a little bit of support. I had a moment of panic there. I forgot that I used a mortise on this piece and I was just kind of going to town, working on flattening that bottom out. Fortunately, I had a reasonable amount of material left. Practicing some more with this bottom of the bowl gouge. It's definitely going better when I'm making sure that the handle is more horizontal. I still think that I'm going to end up probably lowering the height of my lathe a little bit. I think that it's still a little too tall even with my little mini platform and I have a tendency to hold all of my gouges at maybe more of an angle than is probably ideal. Let that sit for a few minutes and then I am going to sand and I will be back after I sand because there's going to be a lot of sanding. Look at all that tear out. Ah. That was ridiculous. That literally sanded this for two and a half hours. My back hurts. Oh. All right. Uh, right, what am I doing? Shellac, I'm doing shellac. I have a little shellac. Maybe, if I can get the shellac open. I wanted the rim to be a little bit dark, but I didn't necessarily want to torch it because I didn't want it to be totally black. I probably could have torched it and then sanded most of that back, but I have some trans tint dye. This is Mission Brown color. I mixed it with a little bit of shellac, but I didn't like the, the color that it came out. It's a little bit too green for this piece. So I went ahead and put it all over the edge there. And then I took some denatured alcohol and wiped most of it off, but I didn't really sand 
the natural edge, I just took off any really rough spots. So the dye kind of settled down into those cracks and crevices and left them dark. And then most of the dye came off with the alcohol from the areas that were that were raised. So I ended up liking the way that it came out. After the shellac dried, I cut it back with a gray scotch bright pad and now I am buffing off the Axe Abrasive Paste. And now I'm doing Brad's Abrasive Sanding Paste. Speaking of Axe Paste and Brad's Paste, both of these guys have sent me kits of their abrasive and polish paste or abrasive paste and tongue wax finish um, to use as part of the 10,000 subscriber giveaway, which is coming up here pretty soon. I think we're, I think we're close to 9,900. So that's very exciting. So if you haven't subscribed, you can think about doing that. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna do for the giveaway. I may have a couple of options. Maybe one option for um, in the event that the that the winner is is a wood turner. Um, actually, I'm probably gonna have more than one winner because I'm not gonna give one person every everything because you know you gotta spread some love around. Um, but then you know maybe maybe like some sort of a finished piece for somebody. If they're not a wood turner, somebody has su had suggested sending a blank out if, you know, somebody is a turner. So what do you guys think? Any suggestions for giveaway prizes? I want to thank my patrons as well. I have not been very active with my Patreon account yet, but that's about to change. So I'm starting to think about what sorts of things I want to have as part of patron rewards. My intention had always been to, you know, to give away pieces, but um, apparently that's against the rules because it's somehow like gambling in that if your chances to win something go up by, you know, s supporting or um, becoming a patron for somebody, then technically that's, you know, spending money to increase your chances of winning something, which is, I suppose, the definition of gambling. So we can't do that, but there's got to be all kind of other things that we can do. I don't know if, like I said earlier, if live streams are something that would be interesting. That's a little terrifying for me, but I'd be willing to give it a go. I know that some of you have been asking about sharpening, showing my sharpening setup, and a shop tour, which <laughs> that just gets scarier and scarier around here as I get more and more projects going. All right, let's polish this guy up. You may have noticed when I got the inside finished up that that hole did in fact appear in the bottom of the bowl. So it does go all the way through. I still don't know what it's from. I ended up putting a little bit of thin, clear Starbond CA glue in it. And then I squished some of the sawdust from sanding this piece in on top of it. So you can still see that it's there, but it is full and smooth. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a drill hole, but I didn't put a drill hole in it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where that came from. So I still need to sand up the bottom, of course. CA glue. The 
brown worked out nicely in this. Black probably would have been all right too, but it blended in pretty well. It's a good size bowl. And then there's his little baby. This one came out of there. This is the smiley one. Oh, that's why this is the smiley one, because it's the same one. Now this one didn't crack at all. Oh, this guy too. Here's my little gremlin dude. Anyway. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Until next time, y'all be safe out there. Always.